Hey guys, some of you might have noticed that in Blender 4.2 the tiling in the compositor isn't working anymore. So after some research I found the release notes and in there it says that this is expected behavior and that the functionality will be restored in future versions. So just to demonstrate this is Blender 4.0. And normally we would take a texture like this. And if we take, for example, the alpha over node, we can mix these two images. And let's say I want to tile the stone texture. We would take the translate node. And here I set it to both axes. And you can see immediately that the tiling works. And if you, for example, want to scale the texture, we take the transform node and scale it. And here we have Blender 4.2 and this is the same node setup. And you can see that it doesn't work anymore despite the translate node offers the option for both axes. So yeah, let's delete this and I'll show you an alternative workaround. So for this, we need to open the texture node editor. And here I choose brush texture, I add a new and toggle use nodes. And by default it has a checker node, we delete it. And instead of the checker node, we take the coordinates node. And this will be our screen coordinates. So I go in here and name it screen coordinates. And just a little tip, if we prepend a dot before it, we make the texture invisible. So this might be useful if other users uh, shouldn't have access to it. So if I now go in the compositor node editor, I take the texture node and here we can, do we don't see the texture. And if I type in dot, we immediately see it. And now we have access to it. And if we toggle the viewer node, we can see that we kind of have screen texture coordinates. And this can be really useful in combination with the map UV node. And this gives us a possibility to map an image to UVs. And if we take, for example, our stone image, we can see that it gets mapped to these coordinates. Right now it's stretched, but we will fix it in a minute. The cool thing now with these pseudo screen coordinates is that we can manipulate them. And for this, uh, the vector math nodes would be very useful, but sadly we don't have them in the compositor. But we can do the old school way like we've had to do in the material node editor in all the versions of Blender by separate the X and Y and Z compo components and then combine them. And here we can do math on each axis individually. For the map UV node, it is important to set the Z component to one. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to correct the stretching. And for this, I need to multiply the X axis by the aspect ratio. And we can get the aspect ratio by dividing the image width by the height. And here we can see the image width for this rendering I did, I've did. And so I type in here 1920 and 1080. And then I simply plug it in the multiply node. And we can see that the image now is square, like it should be. And if I now overlay it, we can see that it looks like this. Let's say we want to scale the image and this is really straightforward. Simply take the multiply math node and multiply each axis by the same value. And here I simply place the backdrop in the bottom right corner. So it is better visible. And to scale the image down, I simply type two in here. And here I preview the coordinates and we can see what happens if I scale them. 
And now to repeat the texture, I simply need to do a fraction on both axes. And this is the coordinates. You can see that they repeat nicely. If I have a look at the image right now, we can see that it tiles perfectly. But there's a little problem. And if I scale up the backdrop a little bit, you can see it that there are seams between them and this is fixable by simply toggle the map UV to nearest. And this is how we get tiling back in the compositor in Blender 4.2. And now some bonus material, because we can use the trick to reference the coordinate node in the compositor to create multiple cool effects. And here I have a render of the standard Blender file. And again, I open the texture node editor set it to brush and create a new texture, toggle use nodes and replace the checker texture by the coordinate. And now back in the compositor, I create a texture node and here I reference this procedural brush texture. And the cool thing about this texture is that we can treat it as a canvas to draw procedural shapes like we would use with texture coordinates in shader nodes, for example. And in fact, other programs uh, offer access to a similar screen coordinates nodes in post-production. And it would be very nice if Blender includes it in future versions. So here I simply separate the X, Y, and Z component again to do some manipulations on these axes. So yeah, the first thing I do is I do the aspect ratio fix again. So I know these values out of my head. I simply type them in here. And now these coordinates are normalized. And here just a little trick because we don't have the vector math node, we actually can do some calculations with the mix color node because color is a vector. And with this node, we can, for example, multiply our coordinate vector with a value. And with this approach, we don't have to do the calculation on each individual axis. And here you can see to repeat the pattern, I again use the fraction node. And yeah, so little trick with the mixed color node, it offers some calculations like divide, subtract, and add. But yeah, more complex calculations are better done on each axis individually. So just for sake of this tutorial, I get rid of this. And do the classic approach. So I connect it again. And to implement the scaling again, I simply do the multiplication on the X and Y axis. So this gives the same result as before. And let's say we want to create a halftone pattern. So get this out of the way. And what I would do in shaders is I would take the vector math node set to length and this would give us the dot pattern immediately. But since we don't have access to the vector math node, I have to create the length operation by myself. And this is simply the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of a square plus b square or in this case, X and Y. And luckily, 
we are able to do this with the standard math node. And here I take the greater than node to simply visualize the circles. So I can change the size with the threshold. And right now it would be useful to center the circles in each of these little squares, because right now it is in the bottom left corner. And here I get rid of the combine XYZ node because I don't need it in this case. And to offset the circles, I simply add a value after the fraction nodes. And in this case, it should be 0.5 or actually the negative 0.5. And this gives us the desired pattern. So just a little recap on what we've done here. The first thing is we normalize the coordinates by multiplying the x-axis with the aspect ratio. And the next step is to scale the coordinates by multiplying each axis. Then we repeat the pattern with the fraction nodes. Then we offset the center of the coordinates. And then we recreate the math to get the length of the coordinate vector. Okay, so now if we take the rendered image and plug it in the threshold of our crater then node, we get this pretty nice halftone effect. So yeah, here I simply have to switch the order of the crater then node. And now if I scale the pattern up a little bit, we get this nice effect. But there is a little problem. And this problem would also be observable if we do this trick in shaders, because it would also be possible to do this in shaders. But yeah, there would be this problem of these harsh lines or these cut it off dots, which won't be observable if we look at a true halftone pattern. But with the compositor, we actually can get rid of them. And we do this with another cool trick of the fake screen coordinates. And this is to manipulate our rendered image because we also can map the rendered image to the screen coordinates. So here I reference these coordinates again and take the map UV node and simply plug the render output to it. And this looks like the normal rendered image, but the cool thing now is that we can manipulate these coordinates again. And with this, we have endless possibilities. So in this case, I again separate the axes and then combine them again. And don't forget to set the Z value to one. And let's say we want to scale the image. We can simply multiply the axis by a value. And 
and we can also reverse this by dividing the axis by a value. And if you take the same value, of course, the coordinates would revert to the original size, so nothing should happen. But we can use this to do some more manipulations. For example, if we round the values between the multiplication and the division. And this would give us the pixelated look. So yeah, we've recreated the pixelate node of the compositor. And here we can see some artifacts around the edges of each pixel. And this can be fixed by setting the map UV node to nearest. And also we can see that the pixels are kind of like in the same aspect ratio as our render. So again, we have to do the aspect ratio fix to our coordinates, like we have done in the setup here for our dots. So I simply duplicate these nodes and then I plug them right before all the other math nodes on the setup here. And now these pixels are squared, but this creates the problem that our image is also distorted. And we have to fix this by simply, after our pixelation, divide our coordinates by the aspect ratio again. And with this we have the correct image size with square pixels. And the last step is to synchronize the pixel size with the dot pattern. So I unplug the value on my top setup and plug the bottom value in here too. And now instead of plugging the raw rendered image into my dots pattern threshold, I simply use the pixelated image. And because the pixel size is identical to the dots pattern size, we now have this really cool and authentic looking halftone pattern. Yeah. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've liked it and you found it useful. Leave a thumbs up or a subscription and see you next time.